Think back to when we're doing quadratic theory, okay? So let's just take a question like this. Okay. Now because it's just a um, it's just a quadratic, you could go ahead and you could find using the quadratic formula what the roots are, but you can already see, um, thinking about the discriminant, right? The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. b squared minus 4ac, okay? So being that b squared is just 4, and 4ac is going to be 28, okay? Clearly, the discriminant is going to be negative, which tells you that the roots are not real or complex, however you want to say it, okay? So, now, that doesn't mean, though, that you can't still work out what the, um, what the roots and um, what the sum and product of these are, okay? Because even though they might be complex, when you put them together in different ways, you end up just having real numbers. So, for instance, what is the sum of roots in this case? It's just minus b minus on a, right? And in the same way, you've got the product being 7. seven. That's all. Okay, no problems. Now, you guys already know you can combine these in all kinds of different ways. For instance, I might ask you to work out alpha squared plus beta squared, okay? What would that be equal to, by the way? What, what combination do we use? Alpha, yeah, good. Good, so you take this to get the alpha and the beta individually squared, but you end up having the two alpha, beta in the middle, which is why you compensate by doing this, okay? And you guys know how to do this, right? But do you remember, sometimes you get a, a weird curveball that might look like this. Um, can you work out what, hold on, sorry, here we go. Can you work out what that's equal to? Okay, now, hold on your hand, raise your hand. Who recognizes this kind of question? Yeah, okay. Now, now there's, a, there's an insight to it. Obviously, it's in a different class of question to all these other ones, because there's no beaters. Right? So there's, there's no combination of these that you can throw together because you always have betas in there somewhere. Okay? Now who remembers, what's the, what's the trick right, in order to get this out? Does anyone remember? Mm. Mm. Now, remember, remember, right? right. I, I just told you that we're used to saying, okay, these are your two building blocks, right? And you have to build every other combination from these two, okay? But that's kind of a lie, because they're not the only two building blocks. You've got one other piece of information in the question. Namely, this guy. Okay. Now the question is, what does he have to do with anything? Okay. Well, remember, what are alpha and beta? Okay. Alpha and beta are, we, we can say in three ways, right? Um, they are either roots, or zeros, or solutions. Right? Okay, that's the way we talk about these. So what that means is alpha and beta, if I put them into this equation, okay, because they are solutions, they should solve the equation, should make the equation work, right? So therefore, as alpha is a solution to the original equation, right? I can say alpha squared plus two alpha plus seven is equal to zero. Does that make sense? It satisfies the original equation. So does beta, okay? Now what does this have to do with this? Can you see it? Can you see it? Um, that, that seven on alpha kind of gives it away, right? I have to divide through everything by alpha, which I can do because alpha is not zero. Why can't you just seven alpha in? Sub alpha, sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, is it divided? Is it seven on alpha just beta? Yeah. This is alpha plus beta. But that doesn't tell you what its value is. Does. You have alpha plus yeah, beta. Minus two. Sorry, say it again. Okay, look, I'm, I'm going to get it from here. I'm going to get it from here, okay? So I think this logic makes more sense. I'm going to divide everything through. Okay, does that make sense? And the reason I can divide through by alpha is because alpha is not equal to zero. Why do I know, by the way, that alpha is not zero? Okay, because of, because of the, the coefficients here. And then, of course, what I want is just these two guys, so I kick the minus two onto the other side. Okay, so, so that's the answer. Okay. Now, why, why did I bring this up? Um, I want to draw your attention back to this question. Okay. We were asked to work out this. Okay. Now you can, sure enough, work out the answer to this by taking um, alpha, beta, and gamma and cubing all of it, right? Then you get some rubbish at the end and you have to correct in much the way that, the same way we did here. Okay? But how can we use this kind of fact 
right? The fact that alpha, beta, and gamma are all solutions to the original equation, how can we take advantage of that to solve this question in a faster way or a more elegant way? Okay. Now, um, I think we've already got all these pieces of information, right? Alpha plus beta plus gamma, I think it was like three. Yeah, three, yeah. is that really good? Alpha, beta, um, beta, gamma, and alpha, gamma is one, and I think the product is five. Yeah. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, okay. So, and the original equation that we got them from was what? X cubed, what, minus? Minus 3x squared plus x, x minus, minus 5. Okay, good. Now, therefore, what I know is that since alpha, beta, and gamma, just like alpha here, they're all solutions to this equation, right? Therefore, I can say alpha cubed minus 3 alpha squared plus alpha minus 5, that's 0. It works. Beta cubed minus 3 beta squared minus, th sorry, just one lot of beta, that's also 0. And so is gamma. Um. Okay, sorry, cubes. Right. Okay, now can you, can you see oh, where I'm headed? And then you okay. add them all up, and then you minus the things. Take them all oh. together. Yeah. Okay. Now, once I take them all together, ta-da! There's the bit I'm after. Okay. Now, I still do have all this extra stuff. Okay. But the extra stuff oh. is stuff that I know about. Right. Um, I already know what alpha squared, beta squared, gamma squared is because I've worked it out in whichever earlier part it was, okay? And obviously I know what alpha, beta, gamma is because that was one of the first results that I got, okay? So I can say alpha cubed, beta cubed, gamma cubed. What's it equal to, okay? I'm just gonna take all this other stuff and put it on the other side, okay? Because once I add all this, that's all equal to zero, so I can just move it over. So I'm gonna get, let's see, three lots of alpha squared, beta squared, gamma squared, I'm going to get one lot of the sum of the roots. Shouldn't Sorry, that's a minus. minus. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> and then I'm going to get 15. Okay. And I, th I think you can take it from there. Okay. Now, which way is better? Um, when you cube it all out, I don't know. I, I think you end up getting a similar number of lines. Okay. However, uh, I think it's probably less error prone and more elegant and more, more thoughtful to actually do it this way, especially seeing as you've got these results already. Okay. This one? Any questions? Does that make sense? Yeah. How did you get the x cubed minus 3 x plus x? That's the question. Yeah. No, it isn't. That's the original equation. That's the original equation. Oh. So I'm comparing this kind of like to this. So it's kind of like the, um, it's the sneaky piece of the puzzle that you we always ignore because we're focused on these two or focused on these three and you forget that that's there and it's actually really useful. Okay.